Most of us in church today would say that we recognize the value of committed relationships in committed community. These words have been around for years where we who belong to a Christ-centered community are always talking about relationship and commitment and community. But what happens when the very fabric of community and relationship starts to become dismantled? What's our response as the church in the day and age where for the first time in recorded history, 22 year olds report higher levels of loneliness than 72 year olds? For a young boy growing up in the average household, he engages in about 30 minutes of one-on-one -on -one conversation and yet in a week exists 44 hours in a digital world. The problem for us in the church today is when we say the words community and relationship, that doesn't always mean the same thing for everybody. Community is becoming more and more isolated and relationship is becoming more and more shallow where people are looking at your life through pictures as opposed to knowing the depth of who you are and being able to call out the brilliance that God has created you to be. So my question again is what is our response in the church when the very fabric of community and relationship is being dismantled? Some of the final words of Jesus before the cross give us a picture of what he understood relationship to be. He says this when he's talking and praying for us future believers that we may know the one true Jesus Christ and God. What does that actually mean? The word know that he uses actually means to know and be known. It's one of such intimacy such closeness, to know and be known, that for Jesus is the foundation of relationship that actually represents eternity. To know and be known, that's what relationship is. So we would recognize that and we would understand that, that actually to know and be known is so significant for us in relationship and in community, that as we do life together, to know others and be known by others, to know Jesus and be known by him is so important as we continue to build community and relationship. When Paul talks about our formational journey, he says that we must walk in the Spirit, to know the Spirit and be known by the Spirit as we are continued to be formed and shaped. Again, most of us would agree with him. The problem for us in the church today is when Paul says these words, they become some of the most confrontational and challenging words as we look to create community. He says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. What Paul is saying is, if you want to get to know Jesus, come into my life and do life with me. What Paul recognizes is that he is so formational to others that his place, that his presence, that him showing up in committed community and relationship is so significant for the formation of the people around him. When we in Northern Ireland would hear Paul say that, most of us would be taken aback. We may see it as overconfidence. We may see it as someone who's slightly arrogant. But I believe this is what the call for us in the church today, this has to be our response to what is culturally happening around us. Relationship is knowing and being known and community is a small group of people saying let's imitate each other as we all imitate Christ. That's why we believe in CFC that Connect Group is a, is a prophetic declaration where we embrace the spiritual practice of community, committing to a small group of people for the purpose of formation into Christ-likeness. So to those of you who are in Connect Group, I remind you of your presence and your importance. When you show up, you show up for the benefit of the formation of others. And to those of you who are thinking about joining a Connect Group, I welcome you to embrace the spiritual practice of community. This is what our nation needs. Our nation needs a collection of people transformed by the love of Jesus so that we may impact Belfast, Ireland and the nations with the love of God through the power of the Holy Spirit.